stuck in the doldrums of spring. Well, looking at the satellite, we're obviously not getting very much out of that. That's going to be a little bit of trapped low-level moisture just off the surface there. And that's the moisture surge coming back up north through Texas as the high moves on off towards the east. If we look at the surface plots, we can see the winds are still out of the northeast. There's still a northerly component here, and dew points are in the 20s just about everywhere. So this is a very dry air mass, and obviously a lot of the cloud cover is going to be in the mid-levels. So we can see on the 850 millibar wind and dew point chart, we do catch some of that moisture around San Antonio, the Interstate 10 corridor. And at the 700 millibar level, that probably gets under the cloud material right there. And we can see that has an origin from Mexico. So that's not really return moisture. The high at 700 millibars located right there. But we're just tapping enough of that air from inside northeastern Mexico and bringing it up into parts of Texas. The surface chart shows the cold front is pushed all the way to the Atlantic coast and the Gulf Coast region. So we're getting that flow over the top of the cold dome at 700 millibars, producing that cloud that we have there in Texas. And further to the west, low pressure around the Las Vegas area. Cool conditions in the Four Corners region, but out in the deserts, 80s. Very seasonable temperatures in that region. And then further to the west, I think we're catching that cold air mass there. Cooler readings, 61 at LA, 60s in the San Joaquin Valley. And that air has an origin from the high deserts and the Pacific region. So 1028 millibar high across the Great Lakes. There it is right there. And then we have this Bear Clinic low out there near New York, producing some rain and a little bit of snow around the Pittsburgh area up towards Binghamton, and I think probably as far west as maybe West Virginia. Taking a look up north, there's a little tongue of warm air coming into the prairies, but more cold air coming down south once again, and we're going to be contending with that in the U.S. a little bit later this week. And there's that 1036 millibar high covering Alaska and Yukon with a pretty good push of cold air out ahead of it. There's a brief look at what's happening in Europe. Cold front coming south through the North Sea into Netherlands and Germany, some mid and low 40s behind that. And out in Ukraine, which is in the news, Ukraine and Russia, problems going on there, 40s in that region, and kind of a quiet pattern, kind of a westerly gradient there. So not much going on in that region. They too are in a bit of a transition into late spring. SPC mostly focusing on Connecticut and Massachusetts way up there. They got a slight risk in effect. Severe thunderstorm watch for that region. Let's take a look at that. That pretty much covers the New York City area, Hartford, and western Massachusetts. And you can see what looks like these convex shaped lines. So that looks like a little bit of Linear storm action with winds likely a problem. And there it is. Damaging winds, some hail is the concern. There it is, the threat for damaging wind gusts continuing. And they've got an actual time plot of the apex of the line. You don't see that too often on their data. But uh, there's the discussion, low top convective line moving east, northeast at 40, 45 knots in the southern New England gusts in that range reported with that line and they're saying steep lapse rates likely some dry air aloft and let's take a look at that that's going to be up near that front and that's the visible satellite imagery that's the line progressing from the northern new jersey area across the poughkeepsie and whatever areas those are north of new york city there's the brookhaven radar from Long Island, and we see the line 
pushing eastward into Connecticut. It's already all the way through Hartford. Probably by the time this is uploaded, it's going to be in the Boston area. Quick check of that radar. That shows that little bow echo there. This is also characterized as a line echo wave pattern. That's kind of the old nomenclature for this type of thing, the LEWP. And that's it right there. That looks like it's going to carry it into the area maybe north of Boston later this afternoon if it holds together. And we can see some of the winds right there around Windsor Locks. Uh, 21 gusting the 42 knots with the passage of that storm and 42 knots just to the north there at Westfield. So, yeah, if you're out there in the rest of Massachusetts, keep a lookout. Not seeing much on the day two outlook, but the day three is a little bit different. Slight risk all the way from Oklahoma City down towards Austin, over to Tyler, Shreveport, Houston, and even Jackson, Mississippi. What's involved with that? Well, looks like we got a couple factors. Low-level jet, steep mid-level lapse rates, destabilization, and a weak low over the Texas Panhandle developing. We can see all that play out on the GFS. So first of all, we're dealing with this cold block of air over Texas. That's going to be eroding gradually. There's the ridge axis, and here's the return flow trying to get established overnight. So tomorrow, not going to be very much going on. But things are coming together out west. It looks like uh, some troughing aloft. You can see that cold thickness value right there, the center of it around L.A., San Diego. This is later tomorrow afternoon. And that implies that there's going to be a jet forming here, winds increasing aloft, and height falls across the southern Rockies. And looking out in West Texas at the surface, return flow set up. I think the dry line is starting to come together right here. And we can see some very weak precipitation indicated here, suggesting some isentropic lift, the advection of moisture over the western edge of this cold air mass. And as we go into Friday, that's going to be the day three outlook period. Some strong warm air advection. This is implied maybe a warm front. That's the wrong color. Yeah, warm front just like that. And it looks like maybe some slightly elevated storms. Some of those may be surface-based later. I don't know exactly where that would happen. Let me show you the soundings in that area. I'll try to get away from the precept there and give you an idea of what it looks like. Mid-level lapse rate's not too bad there, and you can see the moisture looks like low to mid-60s dew points up to about 4,000 feet, and some modest potential for instability capes up to 500 to 1,000. And you can see the shear picking up there a little bit on the hodograph. It's hard to figure out how things will evolve because there's going to be a lot of mesoscale interactions that we can't really forecast this far out, but uh, it does like, look like very strong warm air advection. The front somewhere down in that area for Friday afternoon and the possibility for some of these storms to become surface-based. And then as we go into the evening, the activity spreads into Louisiana. It looks like it kind of congeals in, in MCS out there around Longview, Shreveport, and then marches eastward overnight into Mississippi as a MCS. So if you didn't catch that, I'll run that back into Friday evening, and you can see these cells. I guess what they're going to do is they're going to initially start as small storms. Some question whether they're going to be surface-based, but then you're going to get that upscale growth into a line as the main wave comes out. And there it is, large area of storms moving eastward overnight. What happens after that? A little bit of cold air coming in over the weekend. Kind of quiet to start out the first part of the week, but the return flow is starting to get established once again. The appearance of snow in the Great Basin region, the lower thicknesses, that means something is going on out there. Uh, jet stream or a southern stream jet getting established in the southern Rockies. So all that's going to come together in the plains around midweek, and you can see it right there. Likely we'll have the dry line set up. 
you can see what looks like maybe one of the waves moving out of the mountains on Tuesday. And we get storms developing during the day Tuesday. These storms going up here, they look pretty far east, so I think maybe the dry line is kicked way off to the... Where's my brown pen? Yeah, there it is. Whoop, no. Try that again. Okay, so I think that's going to be the dry line right there, possibly the Pacific front lagging a bit. So we shall see. That's pretty far east. That's a chainsaw thunderstorm chasing but uh, some possibilities further north up in Kansas and likely due to the gradient being kind of twisted around towards the west, the flow should be a little bit more sheared up in that area and you can see these soundings. You're gonna get more of an easterly component in that region. And so, you know, you get that back totograph that we see right here. You can see that easterly flow down on the low, low levels and that could support some rotating cells up in that region. And some potential out there in Mississippi for Wednesday, once again. The main low up there in the Midwest occludes. And things get quiet once again for the last half of next week. And then looks like the model going for some more thunderstorm activity around the weekend, the first couple days of May. And then after that, can't really tell. And that's all for the Wednesday edition of Forecast Lab. I want to thank our new Patreon supporter, Will J. Will J, welcome to the family. And of course, welcome to the Merv, who signed up a couple days ago. Anyway, we'll see you all again tomorrow for the Thursday edition. Take care. Bye-bye.